Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George and our co-host Nomi will not be here today. So we're going to talk about what this means, this idea that um, our wills and our reality is actually causal. Um, this is huge. This couldn't be huger. This represents a new stage of civilization. You know, I'm trying to think of a, um, a comparable, um, similar shift, and it's hard to do that. I mean, like, we, we went from, like, understanding that, or from thinking that our Earth was flat to understanding that, you know, that we're an orb. We went from, you know, seeing ourselves as the center of the solar system to seeing ourselves as the third planet. But these things, you know, I mean, while they might have helped, help our astronomy and help us, you know, get to the moon and back, they don't really affect our, our personal day-to-day -day lives and our lives, um, you know, as a society, as a civilization. But this idea that free will is an illusion and that um, causality is what um, determines everything, cause and effect, or seen differently, that um, if we have an unconscious that's always awake, and active, then we can't have a free will. Then we, um, you know, we begin to understand that it's a, it's a paradigm shift in our consciousness that's, that's happening. You know, transcending, overcoming this illusion of free will. Um, what would it? What will it mean to the world? Um, well, naturally, I can only predict, because um, not having a free will, um, I can't, you know compel either myself or the, the universe to unfold, or our world to unfold in any way. But my best guess would be, um, I, I believe the truth is generally a better guide to, um, to what we do and how we do what we do than, um, than, than you know, de deception, than, than, you know, some kind of um, illusion. So I believe that um, by our world transcending this illusion of free will, we are going to um, emerge into a much more intelligent, compassionate, functioning, um, happier world. Happier, um, yeah, happier world. Because um, firstly, you know, in other episodes, I've I've explored how blame hurts us, you know, in our inter interpersonal relations, how when we attribute free will to others and to ourself, we will tend to blame others and ourselves for, for our misgivings, our human, you know, compelled foibles, our, you know, what we do wrong. But, um, so we've, we've, we've seen that on a personal level, but, but now, you know, naturally, when we when we have a causal will perspective, we understand that wait, you know, you know, we're doing these things um, not because of our choosing, but because of the causal past has compelled us. So, we've again we've gone through how understanding our wills to be causal can lead to greater compassion and understanding and and um, lack of judgment. But now, like in this, let's take a bit of a, a look at how. Um, how this understanding affects our our global civilization. Uh, um, look at um, look at war, the threat of war, conflict, uh, geopolitical conflict between nations. Um, it's based on it's based on the um, the illusion of free will. You know, we're saying to ourselves, well, those people from other countries have a free will and, um, and they're doing, doing something we don't agree with, whatever, so, you know, we're going to start a war. We're going to, you know, we're going to go to war. And um, whereas, what's, what's the other choice? The other choice is like you say to yourself, all right, well, those other countries may be doing things that... Um, that may appear to not be in our self-interest, in our best interest, or maybe just are not, you know, quite objectively, you know, if we can make that judgment. But um, when, we, when we 
look at that from a causal world perspective, we will also say, but wait a minute, those people from that country, the leaders, the, their government, um, the people, the citizens, they're not compelled. They're, they're, they're not, um, their actions are completely compelled. What they're doing is completely compelled. They don't have a free will. So that, um, so that like going to war, punishing a, a whole country for uh, things that nobody in that country could have done any other way, just is, is, is the, the height of insanity. You know, just like it, it doesn't make sense. So um, that's just one way of many that, um, that will, um, that will change, you know, as we transcend this delusion of free will and, and understand that, um, that our reality and our wills are causal. So, um, I really have um, every hope and expectation that, um, that this new era, this new causal reality era, will, um, will bring out the best in us. Um, and it's also, you know, Sometimes this show is about, you know, the illusion of free will, the reality of causal will, or causal will. But you have to remember, it, um, causality isn't limited to human will. Causality controls everything. And I think now is the time for state of the, the universe explanation of, of how this is so. Okay, take the state of the universe at this very moment in time the state of the universe at the previous moment in time was what created it, you know, what, what uh, caused it to be. Then the state of the universe at the subsequent moment, the next moment, will be completely determined by the state of the universe that previous moment. Okay, now that's the most objective, all-encompassing, universal um, description of causality that's possible. It, it relates to the, to the entire universe, state by state, moment by moment. Okay, so, um, so, then, so then what we see is, the, is that um, we don't have free wills. We have causal wills because reality isn't free. Reality is causal. You know, reality can't um, decide to be one way, whatever. Rea reality goes by these certain laws, by this causal progression of, of, um, of events. And that's the other thing I think that um, is pretty amazing in terms of like what all this all means. You know, it may not have such direct geopolitical implications as, as I um, was exploring before in terms of war, how like, um, you know, when we see ourselves and each other as not having a free will, we will be kinder and, and more um, cooperative with each other and less aggressive, less hostile. But, um, but yeah, it's just very cool to just um, realize that it, it extends beyond the human will to all of reality, that basically what I'm trying to say is this is a movie, okay? I don't know what you're doing right now, if you're watching this, whatever. Um, whatever you're doing, whatever you did in the past, what you're going to do in the future, what, what we all did in the past, present, and uh, will do in the future is completely determined. It's not up to us, you know, and that, that is, um, that is amazing. That is amazing. I mean, it's, it's a movie. Um, it is a movie, and, um, well, then, all right, what does this mean? This means that this is, the world is so much more wonderful than, than we have um, believed it to be. If we're so completely deluded about the very nature of why we do everything we do, and we're some, so completely deluded, well, I, I don't think we're as deluded about causality, because we tend to like understand causality when it relates to physical things, you know, cause and effect. But, but if we're so deluded in terms of like believing that we have a free will, um, and then we come to understand that our wills are causal, that everything is cause and effect, that changes everything. If, if it makes reality far more wonderful than it is under the free will perspective. The free will perspective just confuses everyone, okay? Because it doesn't make sense, you know, when you explore it. And so, like, you know, 
where our whole lives are based on this premise that's wrong, or at least a significant aspect of it. And again, you know, you know it, we're not to blame for this. You know, we didn't choose to be um, deluded in this way. We didn't choose to, to, to say to ourselves, well, yes, we have a free will. That was equally compelled. And so, yeah, the great irony is like the universe compels us to um, believe that a delusion is reality. And now it seems like it's time for the universe, that the universe is compelling us to understand that no, uh, free will is not the reality that um, causal will is. And um, I mean, I have, um, I came to this understanding probably several decades ago. I don't remember how how long it was ago, but um, it's a a fascinating um, topic um, to just, to contemplate that everything is a movie, that we're just actors, uh, robots, automatons, whatever. Yeah, it may have an element of, of, um, you know, um, unpleasantness in a way. I mean, but, but that unpleasantness actually just comes from the ego. You know, the ego, we have this, this part of ourselves that says, well, I want to take credit for what I do. You know, I want, you know, I want it to be up to me. And, um, but so then we give that up. We give that up. We, we, we instead see that there is no individual me. There's a one. There's a one universe, one reality that proceeds from moment to moment to moment in a causal fashion, cause and effect. And that's what compels us to do everything we do. And, um, but it, it's amazing. It's amazing that we could, like, you know, that we have for so long, for, for, for a few millennia at least, um, at least two millennia, um, fallen prey to this delusion of free will. Um, okay, I think one, of, one thing this will mean is um, that the world will become a lot more intelligent. I mean, we'll, we'll exercise greater intelligence because like, you know, seeing human will as free is not intelligent. It's very unintelligent. Um, there's, there's absolutely no evidence that, w- that we have a free will. Um, and there's so, there's, there's um, conclusive, ir- irrefutable evidence that, um, that our wills are causal. And um, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, and so, like, our world, I think, needs to change. You know, I think... Um, you know, again, considering climate change, um, the global economy, um, we need we need great changes. And I have a feeling that as we understand that our wills are causal rather than free, these changes will um, come about much more intelligently, probably much more quickly. You know, this is probably a, a a great God, godsend to humanity, to um, and and also to to um, not just to humanity, but to to the, the animals we share this um, this earth with, the other forms of life. Um, and you know, it's going to mean. What this will mean is like that. Um, a lot of people who have held the belief in free will, you know, in, in within traditions that have held it for a couple of millennia, will be challenged. You know, um, it's kind of like a challenge on, on, the, um, on the scale of creationism versus evolution. You know, um, so many of us, I guess, still believe that there was like, you know, an Adam and an Eve, and, and like that Eve was taken from the rib of Adam. You know, um, scientifically, we don't believe that anymore, but... Um, you know, many people who once believed that understand the um, the overwhelming evidence against such a, a creation story and, and in favor of evolution. And so this is like, this is a change um, on a scale with that, but, but even much more profound. 
much more profound because again it's like it's it's at the heart of of who we are you know it's it's the heart basically it's like a choice between seeing ourselves as gods which we're not you know as gods able to like choose to think whatever we want at any time or from the more humbling perspective that we are subjects we're kind of like pawns on a um on a chessboard that um, we're doing the, the, the will of God or the causal past. That's huge. That's huge as, as, um, as our guiding philosophy. We're going from one guiding philosophy of, you know, that, w- that was mistaken, this illusion of free will, to a guiding philosophy of, of understanding that everything is a movie, everything is causal, everything is, is cause and effect, that... that um, that we're just playing out roles, and um, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, now, again, in, as we go through these, whoa, as we go through these shows, we are, um, we're going to get into this in a lot of detail. We're going to bring physics into this. We're going to bring neurobiology into this. We're going to bring psychology into this. We're going to bring sociology into this. We're going to bring anthropology into this. Um, this, this, you know, there, there are so many ways to understand why free will is impossible and why both our reality and our will, our human will, must be causal. And we'll we'll go through them. But just you know, for this episode. I thought it'd be cool to just like to contemplate what this means to us, you know, what this means to us as a as a humanity, as a civilization. Um, I can't think of a question like this that has uh, consumed humanity in the past. I mean, there was a Scopes Monkey trial some decades ago where they, you know, it was about creation versus evolution. And that I think caught the national press for a while, but you know that you know years after it just wasn't talked about anymore. This is something that um, that sooner or later, later I would imagine will um, will capture the um, the global consciousness as as the um, as one of the fundamental questions and issues of our time that. Um, and you know, I'm not going to be disingenuous by saying that it's a, a valid question because the the evidence against free will is so compelling, so all-encompassing that um, that it would be disingenuous to to say that it's going to be a, a debate without um, without a real answer. In other words, basically, if the world was debating between whether two and two equals four or two and two equals five, it's not really much of a debate, right? So that's what that's what we're heading into now. But but to a lot of people, you know, to a lot of us, it will be a revelation, and and it's incumbent upon those of us who understand um, the nature of our causal will to help those of us who all, who don't understand to understand it um, better. You know, it's incumbent upon us to um, to kind of like mitigate the kinds of fears people might have or, or, or to, to just like somehow address people's um, misgivings about giving up their, um, their godlike power, you know, their, their, their presumed godlike power to, to believe what they want and think what they want and feel what they want. But, and so, yeah, that, that should like evoke our, um, you know, great understanding. Um, it's going to be cool. I'm getting tired. <laughs> this is like, yeah, I did and decided to do four shows, um, pretty much back to back. But um, and of course, I'm, we we got into why you know, in real time, um, we don't have free wills, and this is a perfect example. If I had a free will, hey, I wouldn't be tired from this. My my brain cells would be just as <laughs> as um, you know, strong uh, now as they were <laughs> a couple hours ago, whatever. But anyway. Um, back to the t- um, to the topic. Um, criminal justice. This is extremely important. Anyone who has ever been imprisoned, 
or who is in prison now is really being punished wrongly. I mean, um, if you, let's say, if somebody forced you to do something, and I mean absolutely forced you, you had no choice in the matter, and then, you know, you had to do it, then is it right? Is it morally right? Is it just for you to be punished for this thing that you absolutely had no choice but to do? Our jails and prisons are filled with people who are suffering that fate. And again, it's not our fault because we don't have free will to, to have, like, you know, to have overcome the illusion of free will and, and, and treated them more um, compassionately in the past. But, but it's something we have to recognize, okay? Now, some people immediately will say, well, you know, are you, are you suggesting we give up laws and, um, and our rule of, of, of order and all? And, and no, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that, like, you know, how would you like to be in a position where you're in, in jail or prison being punished for something you absolutely had to do or completely compelled to do? You know, that's just like... It's a reality we're going to have to face. And um, so what's the answer? Okay, naturally part of it is that civilization, humanity, society, has to be protected from ourselves and each other. You know, if somebody's going around just like doing things that are hurtful to, to themselves or other people, certainly we um, need to take steps to um, counteract that, to prevent that. You know, the greatest good for the greatest number. That's what we cherish. That's what we value. So... So we'll continue to do that, but like when somebody does something wrong, well, this goes, let me preface this. Um, by understanding that we don't have a cause of free will and a cause of will, we can catch those people who would turn to crime in their later years as adults when they're very young and condition them to not go that route. But now we have a lot of people in jail and prison, you know, for something that they had no choice but to do, this, this transcending the illusion of free will is about how we're going to treat them. Because it, it seems quite wrong to punish them. There, there is, there is um, the issue of punishment as, um, you know, that um, punishment will, will prevent um, other people from... Um, from committing crimes. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a deterrent. It's a deterrent. But, um, but now, my, my, my feeling on this, my, my guess is that um, as we understand that our will is our cause and we're not free, we will, like, perhaps separate, you know, those of us who need to be separated for whatever reason, you know, for the sake of themselves and, and the rest of us. But we'll do it without the sense of retribution. We'll do it without the sense of judgment. Okay, um, 200 years ago in the United States, our criminal justice system was about penitence. That's why it was, they were called penitentiaries. penitentiaries. Penit <laughs> Long shot. And um, reformatories. You know, it's about reform. It's about taking you know, a person and showing the error of their ways, but not through punishment so much, you know, through, um, through correction, through um, humane correction. But, We've, we've gone from that kind of, of criminal justice system to a, a system that, um, that punishes. It's retributive. It's like um, just deserts. They did something evil, makes them evil. So, like, we're just in punishing them. And that is, like, so wrong, you know. Um, so that, you know, and once, you know, God willing, once we are able to, um, to reform our criminal justice system, um, those of us who would resort to, to crimes that, that hurt us and hurt society would probably be much less likely to do that. Because, like, again, criminals a lot of times do their crimes because they attribute free will to another person. They say, well, this person freely hurt me, so I'm going to hurt him back, or, you know, whatever it is. Okay, um, we're winding down here, and... Um, I've chosen to focus on the criminal justice system toward the end because I think that's um, the area of civilization of our society that I think um, this point um, 
might relate to this this idea that we have causal wills might relate to most directly um, from a moralistic perspective, uh, from a perspective of, of like you know alleviating unnecessary suffering, but but the reality is that um, you know this awakening to the reality that our world and our will, our human will is causal, is um, is revolutionary. You know, we will create a um, a brand new world. And and you know, I you know, I haven't thought. I don't I don't know how long it might take. And and I, you know, to be completely honest, I don't know if it will happen because like you know, if we don't have free wills, um, you know, we don't know whether the causal past will. Um, you know, lead us to understand that it is really responsible for our, everything. But it seems, from all the evidence, from our, our education, from our um, development as a species, becoming more intellectual, more intelligent, more evolved, it seems that that is clearly the way way we're going. That we're 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 going into an era where we'll, where we will understand this, and it it'll be amazing. I mean, just um. You know, they talk about the dumbing down of America, how somehow we've gotten stupid and stuff. Um, this is the kind of issue, this, this is the kind of topic, the kind of question that will reawaken our intellect. And God willing, it will help us all. Okay, that's all we have time for. Thanks for watching. Well, no, we've got another 11 minutes. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So anyway, we're going to explore this in a lot of detail, in a lot of ways. And we'll see you then.